Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Flux TV Africa. Let's say hello to our guest um, as we analyze the papers this morning, Mr. Gide, um, Gide Johnson. He is the Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning, Gide Johnson. Good morning to be with you and salam alaikum. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks Great for joining to see us. You too. Um, let's look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Um, and it's about that president's visit to Imo State. The headline reads, Empty Oweri streets take the shine off Buhari's visit. Residents obey IPOB seat at home order in Aba, Umwahia, and Enugu. The president says that he wants to be remembered for stabilizing Nigeria. Says Igbos are in charge of Nigeria's economy. Buhari to echo us, we must adopt preventive adopt measures to prevent coup, says four coups within four few months in West Africa is dangerous. Ohaneze says no secessionist group can succeed if there is good governance, and we ask Buhari to release detained Igbo youth. Lagos Assembly passes VAT, anti-open grazing bills. Gunmen abducts 18 passengers in Ondo State. Anambra Guber elections. INEC obeys court, list Ozibo. NMO as PDP candidates, party inaugurates 179 member National Campaign Council. Abiodu Berry's dad as Shibaju Obasanjo Adeboye governors attend. Secondus loses out as Fintiri emerges PDP Convention Committee Chairman. Uguani heads Zono Committee and will get national chairman that can stand the test of time. That's according to Fintiri. UBA posts $76.2 billion Naira profit in half year 2021. NGX Group holds first AGM as shareholders approved $1.84 billion Naira profit. All right, now on the Punch newspapers, value added tax amendments, NBA, SANS, caution National Assembly, fault FIRS planned revenue court. Ohaneza laments marginalization. Buhari says Igbos control the economy. Also, NMA and UT differ on Edo's threats to bar unvaccinated doctors and teachers. Inugu man allegedly kills pregnant wife over food. And also, this morning on the punch, bandits demand 10 million naira for abducted Ondo travelers. And Motekun rescues nine. Lagos DPO loses gun after alleged office sex. Detains lover. PDP CSOs fume as Buhari absolves self of corruption. Also on the punch, stamp duties, experts back governors as state drags federal government to Supreme Court. Elites promoting ethnic and religious division, says the Vice President, Yemi Shimbaju. And Mark May married PDP BOT chair, set for national chairman begins. Um, finally, marketers seek removal of value added tax on imported cooking gas. And their states generate 5.30 trillion naira, gets 10.19 trillion naira, and borrow 1.84 trillion naira in five years. Let's take a look at the Nation newspaper now. Buhari says, I'll stabilize security, economy, before leaving. It will can secede from Nigeria, says President Ohanese. Makinde others to plan PDP convention of his zoning. United Nations warns against attack on schools, abductions, stakeholders, Halts trend. Also, court okay Stevie Joshua's widow as trustee. Amoteku rescues nine Lagos bound passengers kidnapped in Ondo State. Academic Staff Union of Universities ASU insists on resumption of strike. Lagos moves closer to VAT collection. House passes bill. Oshimbajo Adeboye Obasanjo governors bid Abiodo's father farewell. All right, now on the Guardian newspapers. Amid uh, value added tax uproar, states sue federal government over sharing of stamp duties. FX market faces fresh tests as Naira hits all time high or low at 543 Naira to the dollar. Businesses, residents, Sean Uzodima, ground emo as uh, Buhari visits. And also, INEC recognizes Uzibo as PDP candidate for a number of gubernatorial polls. Investors lose. 27 billion naira in four days, as analysts predict gloomy outlook. PDP governors take full charge as Fintiri, Uguani head convention and zoning committees. Also, ECOWAS suspends Guinea as Oshimbajo urges decisive steps against schools. Good morning once again. Jire Johnson, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'd like you to go ahead. 
Uh, let's, um, let's start with economic stories first, um, and then the issue on fiscal federalism. Uh, we, we saw the story that VAT amendment and B sans cautions National Assembly faults and FIRS plan. Revenue court. Uh, I think uh, it's a welcome development. I think the governors are just waking up to, to, to their responsibility, especially the governor of um, River State, ably joined by the governor of, of Lagos State. Uh, I think one of the ways we need to strengthen our democracy is for us to test the constitutionality of, of our laws. And, and I think this is a limitless test for our democracy. I think this case we get to the Supreme Court. Then we lay to rest the ghost of who to collect a value-added tax and who not to collect the value-added tax. And because they share hypocrisy and injustice for you, for example, to make that, uh, to make over 48 billion in Lagos State and only for you to remit uh, less than less than 10 million, 10 billion rather to Lagos State and for Kano to make 2.8 billion and for Kano to get 2.8 billion from what it has made. And then for, for, for Kano to have East Bar Police, I don't know, when people talk about local um, state policing, the reality is that we already have state police in the North um, because I don't know under which constitution you have some groups of people that will stop that will stop people that want to engage in commercial enterprise to stop them from using mannequin to sell to sell their 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 their, 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 their clothes and their products their garments and then and the same set of people will destroy um thousands of bottles of alcoholic alcoholic drinks nigeria is a secular state nigeria is not is not um, this hypocrisy will, will surely come we surely come to, 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 to an end, and we are waiting for it. But the, 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 the bottom line falls on the National Assembly. The people that are in National Assembly, thank God that the Speaker of the House of Rep is from Lagos State. We see, we, we see the direction. Whether these people are truly representative of the people or they are the representative of, 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 of their pocket. You recall that in 1999, between 1999 and 2007, in actual sense, PDP governors took Obama Sanjo to court many times. I remember James Ibori, Victor Obongata, on on resource control, on even under Jonathan, on Soviet went for uh, went for the rest of it. The unfortunate thing is that under APC, most of the governors are in those eyes. They are they are, they lack courage and they don't have the way with that to challenge the federal government. They 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 shouldn't. And you see. The, the, the thing is, you must represent your state first and foremost. Then, before you think about about partisan about partisan uh, politics, another you are, you have seen that they have agreed on the stamp duty. Now, federal government collects stamp duty. It has failed to remit what belongs to the state with respect to what belongs to the state. So, the thirty six attorney general of the federation in a, in a later story, they've gone to court suing the federal government. Telling the federal government that in the first instance you are meant to be the one to collect stamp duty, but you are collecting stamp duty on our behalf, and you have not remitted what belongs what belongs uh, what belongs to us. We are getting to fiscal federalism, and whether gradually and steadily, the issue of restructuring. When people talk about restructuring, actually they are talking about fiscal federalism. We are by resource control because federalism is about the power coming from the base and then going. To, to to the center and not power coming from the center and going back to the to the base. Uh, hopefully the courts will rule and we hope that the Supreme Court will be bold enough to take the rightful decision in the interest in the interest of Nigeria. Jim, Jim Johnson, economic I want story. us to take a look at this story. It, it seems to be the biggest story on all the papers. It's about the president's visit to Imo State. The daily yeah, that's the political Yes, the Daily Independence is reporting it as saying that the MTO restricts has taken the shine of the president's visit. Um, the nation is reporting the president's statement uh, and promise to stabilize the economy and security before leaving. Uh, and we see that as well on the, uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, but the visit of the president to commission projects. You know, I listened to, before we, 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 we came to this segment, I listened to the earlier segment. We, when you guys were having the conversation with respect to why would a president go and commission drainage system? It's an insult. And then why would you commission project and you use the you know the resources it cost Federal Republic of Nigeria for the president to leave Abuja and to go to 
already yesterday to commission basic projects that anybody that projects that you could even you, you don't even need to commission you don't even need to commission just for people we, have you ever seen the president of the united states going to commission roads drainage system bus stops and the rest of it it is unfortunate and like um victor said this should have stopped since 1999 these were vestiges of military regime you know because military administration do not have anything to do with the public so they use commissioning of projects to secure legitimacy to give a face beyond them sitting in the barracks and in the dumb barracks then to give a face and to maintain contact with people that's why they commission projects in those days and i think we should have stopped that since we have gotten to democratic democratic and governance with the president saying that he will stabilize security under three years he's not been able to do it in six years we see what he will be able to do whether he has the magic wand in the next in the next two years except that the president is thinking of an extension of time and probably a constitutional review and and then he's looking for more time to solve the problem because if you cannot solve the problem in, in, the, in the last six years and you have two years left and you see because it's an open ended statement that i will stabilize the economy and I'll stabilize the security before leaving. Mm. Before leaving when? Completion of my time. <laughs> before the completion of my time or before leaving. We are blowing, we are speaking English now. We are blowing grammar. So it's open to different interpretation. But this is an open ended statement before leaving when? At the completion of my time or where whether which takes me to the story of what the president said concerning ECOWAS, that they didn't they need to do something to prevent to prevent to prevent coup in West Africa because we have, we have witnessed four coups in the last 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 one 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 year. So and then if you look at the story of the president visit, the way Vanguard reported the story is different from the way the Daily Independent. Mm -hmm. And Vanguard reported the story from a successful angle. angle yes. Whereas the the Daily Independent you could see that sometimes journalists are not helping this country. They are not helping the country. You, what we require from you is for us to give a, an accurate account. And I can see, you can see the footage on social media where people are being imported. Buses are bringing in people. And then large number of security are brought in to, to, to stop um, any, any kind of threats, imagine or real, uh, against, 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 um, against that visit. And then we saw a particular video where a special uh, advisor to the to the governor who was responsible for mobilization was 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 livid with anger that then um, people did not come for the for the event you can't you can't buy acceptability you can't buy it and that's what um, um some governors try try to do and don't forget the circumstances surrounding the emergence of the governor of um imo 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 state so there's this um oh. there's this credibility surrounding his emergence as um um, as, as the governor of of, of of Imo State. So that factor is there. How popular is he? Was he the popularly elected governor of the state? Was he the popularly elected governor of the state? He didn't get the popular mandate. He only got his mandate from the courts because the court nullified um, some of the popular... So, talking about uh, popular that, uh, uh, Gina Johnson, your, your last statement saying that he bought the judgment of the court and that he's not popular... I didn't say he bought. I said... I said he got the judgment. He got. Of the he Supreme got. Court. Okay. Got. So that leads me. That leads me to the next story about um, Anambra State gubernatorial election. He said INEC obeys court list Ozibo NMO as PDP candidate. Um, we we know that there's there's been a controversy regarding the. Um, elections in Anambra state, different court judgment, different parties emerging. And now INEC is saying that they're recognizing Valentine Ozibo as the, um, the PDP candidate. And this is based on the latest appeal of the court. So do you say this is also similar to what we're seeing where, you know, INEC, rather than stick to what it should be, their primaries and all of that, it now, you know, seems to go for a final court decision? Now, I can't, the, the essence of INEC is... Uh, this pre-election matter should be resolved before the election. Now, what are the candidates going to vote for? They don't know because until the court rules. And I think that because it's really of INEC on his own responsibility. If INEC actually supervises the primaries of the party, recognizes the legitimate um, ESCO of the party, and supervises 
the primaries. INEC should know which candidate is the real candidate. And INEC should be able to tell the court by the virtue of the extant laws that establishes INEC as the body responsible for the conduct of election and supervision and monitoring of the party processes. This is the candidate of the party based on the extant law. Any other candidate outside of this is not duly recognized. They will have these problems you're having. But you know what? INEC itself is partisan. Mm -hmm. INEC itself benefits from this this charade. And that's why INEC has not been able to put up. For example, as INEC creating the parties to tell the parties, to tell APC, for example, that APC is embarking on illegality, having a caretaker committee running the party. Do they have the gumption? Have they done what they are supposed to do? That anything you do with respect to this will not be recognized. With respect to what happened in Zanfara in 2019, what happened in 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 Bayesa, what happened in 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 in, in Adamawa State, what happened in River State, where the party could not present candidates. Must we wait until after the election for the court to decide who the candidates are? So it's a failure of INEC. We shouldn't blame anybody. And mm -hmm. the courts are not also helping matters because there are cases that the court should look into and there are cases that the court should not look into. For example, I ask you this question. Can the court order stop an election? There is no court order that can stop an election because there is no court order that can invalidate a constitutional provision. Election is meant to be conducted by INEC. And the moment INEC fixes that bit, there is no court in the land that can stop INEC from conducting that election on that date, except INEC on its own took a decision to change the date. And as the, the Nigerian Judicial Council, how have they disciplined erring judges? We saw the situation concerning APC primaries. A court in, in River State gave a judgment. A court of comparable status in Kirby State gave a contrary judgment. That was why APC was able to go ahead with their, with their um, local government congresses last week, Saturday. And I tell you, they have just wasted their time. Because if people should go to court, then we'll be nullified. All right, Junior Johnson, let, let's and move over clear. to... Let's quickly share, um, get, uh, get your views on um, you know something else, and that is uh, the economy, with the Naira in seeming free fall. Um, it was, of course, at uh, 543, you know, some people say 545 yesterday uh, to the dollar. Uh, share your thoughts on that one, and, you know, we, we, you know, it doesn't seem to be getting better. How do you reconcile the free fall of Naira, and that's talking about our monetary policy, and then how do you reconcile that with the kind of profits banks are declaring? How? For example, we saw in the story that the UBA record 72.76.2 billion naira profit half of the year, first six months. And the monetary policy of the nation does not have any effect on the fiscal policy. And it's both the monetary policy and the fiscal policy that gives direction to your economy. So the naira will be on a free fall because you know what? The actors and players in the in the financial sector in in the monetary sector are making money from it who are those when banks engage in trading of currency when uh, you have a uh, parallel market engaging in trading of currency when you don't have a productive economy when you rely solely on 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 importation of goods and your export outlay cannot match your import outlay so that's what that's that's the talent we have and the president said he's going to stabilize the economy. What have we done concerning the power sector? What have we done? You, you saw when companies were citing their regional offices in Ghana, and we said it meant nothing. It meant nothing. While we were young, um, we were taught in secondary school by Ghanaian teachers. And in 1983, we forced Ghanaians to leave this country. And that's when the issue of GMG came into, in, into focus. Ghanaian CD was regarded as toilet paper. Their currency was useless. Quote unquote, then, what's the value of Ghanaian currency? What were the things that they did that made their currency?
to be of value. And what were the things that we did to make our currency to be of no value? It's about, it's not about commissioning gutters. It's not about commissioning drainages and roads. It's not about, it's not about pulling all the security apparatus to protect the president for imagine or real threat when he visits a particular state during during presidential visit. That will solve the problem. It's about us doing the basic. What have we done concerning the sector? The doctors have gone on strike. As soon there's a story that says as is about going on strike. As is about going 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 on strike. Uh, the federal government does not allow competition to exist between the state so that each state will develop on its own comparative advantage. And so uh, an economy where you don't allow the, the economic factors, the indices to work, you have too many government intervention in the economy. So you have a pseudo economy. And that's the economy Nigeria has, and it will affect your currency, and your currency will have a free fall. If you soon get to a state in which you exchange 1,000 naira for a dollar, it's not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But the reality is, at the, if they have told us six years ago that this is the way it will be, no, everybody will argue. But tell me, what are the measures that we have put in place to stop this free fall? What yeah. measures? Well, um, you know, one of the things, you know, people always point out also, you know, where campaign promises in 2014, you know, leading to the uh, elections, you know, and um, some of the statements that were made back then, you know, there's still some of those pictures um, you know, asking if 216 naira, you know, was good enough, you know, and pro promising you to know, make it election, 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 um, election have consequences. Absolutely. Um, we, what we did in 2015 was to stop an economy that was growing because we hated the man, a perception was created around the man. Um, it's the same thing that Americans are experiencing now. Election have consequences. And they hated the man. Look at look at the global economy. Just situate. And I told my friends that are living in America prior to this year, 2020 election. I said, you guys are going to experience what we experience in Nigeria. It's just a matter of time because your economy is doing fine. You hated the man, and then but the economy is doing fine. You wanted nice men to be your president, and it's not nice men that run the economy. It's it's about intelligence. It's about knowing what to do and having the right people around you. I ask you this question. What is the quality of this cabinet composition? The cabinet of the present president. Compare the cabinet of the pres president now and compare that cabinet with the previous cabinet of the previous administration. Just, just look at the composition the composition of the cabinet. And then don't also forget that, that it took this president almost six to seven to eight months before he constituted his cabinet in the first instance. And that's what has affected this economy. Right. I did many TV programs. They are there in the public domain. That I said it will affect my day. People said, no, President needs time to set up his cabinet. And we are seeing the consequences of inaction Judy by the President then, and we are paying the price now. Judy Johnson, thank you very much um, for your Pleasure time. Pleasure to be with you. Uh, this morning, thanks for, for thank joining you. us. And of course, we wish yeah. you a very beautiful Friday ahead. Uh, um, uh, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful Friday. Thanks for joining us. Once again. All right. Stay with us. So we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're going back in history to tell you things that happened on this day, the 10th of September, many years ago. I'm going back as far as 1897. And I'm going back to the year 1919. Stay with us.